So today, I'm going to talk about a few like um, little secrets, little hacks, little unknown kind of behind the scenes things that um, you might or you might not know about. If you watch this channel, you probably know a couple of them, but uh, they're really useful things that you guys should know. Um, if you're getting into this hat thing, you know, buying hats with a decent price tag, you know. And you guys know about the, the initials? You guys know that you could go into any really good hat shop and have your leather sweatband initialed? Yeah. We used to do it in gold, like this. And then we lost the gold leaf from the old machine, and then we found it again. So we changed machines to one like this now. So, so now we have, it gives you little aerations in your sweatband, and basically never wears out. So this will say Kev forever, where the gold leaf initials eventually wears out from you know, wear and sweat and stuff. So we will initial your sweatband as long as it's a leather sweatband for free. Anytime you ask, um, you could bring it in. Um, I haven't been in the shop for a year, but I'm going to assume it's still free because uh, the last uh, 25 years it was free. But anyway, um, they'll do that. They can't do a lot of letters because they start to come like off center. They don't. It's a very hard machine to to work with. It's like an old brass iron kind of. Uh, press, you know, um, not powered, it's, you know, it's all like uh, manual, you know, but um, you bring it in, we'll do it, we don't care if you bought it at JJ's or if you didn't buy it at JJ's, it's your grandpa's old hat, whatever, it has to just be a leather band, we can't do it on a cloth band or a ribbon, so you could buy a hat and then say, hey, can you initial it, you know, well, Kevin said you can initial my hat, yes, we can do that, but if we initial it, you can't exchange it or return it. So that will that will definitely void any exchanging or refunds. Um, but if you know, you know, it's gonna work, like let's say you've bought the hat before, uh, you've bought a whole bunch of them or the same size, and you just know this one is gonna be the same, you could do it, I guess. But generally, yeah, people do it while they're in the shop, not so many uh, mail orders, but you can. You could also send us your old hat and um, we'll initial that free of charge. Sending it back to you is, is I believe, fifteen dollars and fifty cents. Uh, fifteen fifty. That includes a JJ Hat Center hat box, a proper men's hat box, you know, with a cover and a handle and stuff, uh, corrugated, you know, strong, not a cheap one. And um, that's double box and a corrugated part and everything. So, yeah. Um, now the same thing, you can mail your hat in too if you want it to be um, reshaped, steamed, uh, a little clean up or something. You know, we can't clean sweat stains or big stains and stuff, but normal every day your hat is just old, beat up, out of shape, dusty. We can hand it back to you looking pretty nice, you know, like you can give us something like a little bit crunchy looking like this, you know, and we'll hand it back to you looking like that, you know. Um, 90% of that is getting a roll. Okay. I'm going to try to get closer to the microphone so that my voice carries a little better. I know sometimes the open window is a drag, but uh, we're between seasons now. We're, we're not in air conditioner season, so uh, when that hits, uh, it'll get quieter. So, okay. There's the deal. You can mail in your hat. Um, it's fifteen fifty to get it back to you. That's all. You just... Uh, you give us a piece of paper, you know, when you mail it in, with your name, your phone number, your mailing address, and what you want done. Uh, can you please reshape this? Uh, you know, uh, is it possible to stretch it a tiny bit? And stretching, it doesn't really work, I gotta say. So don't, don't count on stretching. It just doesn't work. You could go even to the Stetson's website, and there's a thing, frequently asked questions. Um, and they say, yeah, can, can they be resized? And I say, yeah, you can size it down a whole size, but stretching does not work. You can have it stretch at a hat place, but it will come back. So it contracts again. There is something inside here on the tip of the leather sweat. See that little tube part there? That Okay. 
there is a, I've talked about this, it's a nylon fishing line kind of in there, which is meant to stretch, stretch, and then go back. So when you stretch a hat, that piece of nylon stretches temporarily, feels great, and then it comes back. So what you have to do is clip that. It's gotta be clipped so that the tension of the circle is broken, and then your hat is stretchable. With the reed being in there, it's gonna go out and back in. It's part of what keeps the shape. It gives it this oval shape. See how it always bounces back? That's the reed, it always bounces back to that. That's the quality of it, but one of the things is, is when it stretches too big, it always comes back. You gotta clip the reed if you want the hat to stretch, okay? So don't expect us to stretch your hat much. Um, I don't think the people at JJ's are gonna get you too much results with a hat stretch or really any place. Buy your hat big if you're in doubt and just pat it down. That's what you do. Most of my hats have a little something inside. They just all do. And you check them because I buy them big. This one's got a little piece of foam in the back. Look at that, a little one. Um, right there. So you buy the hat. If it's a tiny bit big, you pat it down. You're fine, you're safe, there's no issues, there's no worries. If it's too tight or getting too small, it's so hard to fix that, and when you do fix it, it affects the brim. See, watch one. I'm gonna pull now. Bigger, eh? You don't want that. It looks ridiculous. The brim down it's, gives you this look. I'm sure you've seen it. This weird, it's a shrunken hat kind of thing. Um, happens with wool hats a lot. You know, it stretches and then also shrunk. So there's not enough felt to even make the shape anymore. Don't buy your hat small. Buy it if you're between sizes, go round up to the bigger size and pat it down. Okay, if you're in doubt, ask us to include a little padding with it. And uh, a lot of times I think they will if we have it. Alright, so yeah, JJ's will reshape. Now I can't talk about other, other hat shops, but JJ Hat Center in New York will reshape your hat free of charge, no matter where you bought it, whether you found it in the trash, it's your grandpa's hat, it's your dad's hat, it's something you bought at this store, a competitor store, online, doesn't matter. We don't ask and we don't care. We know it's your hat and it's special to you. That's all that matters. So if you have a hat you need stretched, cleaned, reshaped, any of that stuff, we'll do it for you. Cleaning, uh, you know, we dust it and brush it, okay? It does help somewhat, but yeah, big stains and stuff, there's not a lot you can do. Um, sometimes a little fine sandpaper can take some surface stuff out if it's on the surface and not deep. But if it's too deep, you know, it's hard to grind it out. There, there are ways to clean certain hats. You can uh, kind of wet clean them, but uh, I'm not going to get into that with felt um, because that's not something that's simple or I want anybody to do um, because it's very easy to screw up and uh, then it's kind of like my fault, you know. So yeah, don't don't try to clean your hat. If anything, just buff the top layer with some good fine sandpaper. Not crazy, crazy fine, just regular old like emery board kind of sandpaper, you know? All right, let's talk about a couple of other things. Um, you guys know what a beaver is? I'm not talking about like a beaver, I'm talking about like a, a not a beaver felt, 100% beaver, you know, Stetson. More like the long hair finish. This is a medium or short hair beaver, a silk beaver, they would call this. But you know those kind of super fly, furry finishes, right? They're furry, kind of wintry. Okay, and you guys that are kind of old school, uh, you know what I'm talking about, you get down with beavers. They're, um, you know, they came out of the sort of super fly, pre-hip hop um, kind of funky culture. And, um, you know, they were a little bit pimped out, you know, you'd wear them in a kind of a gangster lean kind of thing, and you'd get a really cool, like, you know, different sort of uh, creases, and, you know. But anyway, beavers, here's the, the, the killer now, you ready? Now, don't get too disappointed with those guys who own beavers, okay? Beavers are not made out of beaver. Most of them are uh, rabbit, wild hair, things like that. So... It's possible the old, old ones were beaver, but no. 
they, they use other things. Um, it's generally closer to rabbits that they're using. Uh, rabbit, wild hare sometimes, but yeah, it's rabbit, it's not beaver. So beavers are not beaver. Um, beavers that are you know, beaver felt, 10% beaver felt, 100% beaver felt, that's different. Those are made from beaver. Let's talk about that now. The X system, it means nothing. Um, basically, it means like, used to be 4X and above was rabbit fur felt. Anything below that was either a wool blend or wool. Now the lines have gotten blurred. So it's more like 5X, 6X, that's all fur felt. What it means, it starts at rabbit and they sprinkle some beaver and it's almost no beaver. It's just like a sprinkle. As you go up, they put more beaver in a 10X, you can feel the beaver, you can feel it. But uh, anything below that, it's pretty much rabbit. You're buying a rabbit at its fur, it's waterproof and will last you a lifetime. That's what Stetson is known for. They're known for those hats. Um, they say on the website they don't tell you the exact percentage because it's an industry secret. They don't want anybody else to copy them. But it's basically, yeah, there's almost no beaver in the, the low X ones. The rabbit. Um, they put a beaver logo. It's part of Stetson's logo. And they don't even write beaver inside. They don't write 10, you know. But when they get to 10X, they write 10X beaver because there's a decent amount in there. Um, but yeah, anything that's like a 5X, 6X, you know, all those, it's a rabbit. So that's what, you know, most of my hats are a rabbit and they're really good. Or Salino is a little different. They are Nutria and Wild Hare, which are very similar to beaver. Beavers are indigenous to North America, Canada, and USA. Uh, in Europe, they don't really have that. So, um, they have Nutria, so they use Nutria and wild hair, and that would be their equivalent. If you've ever seen sheared beaver, and compare it to sheared Nutria, the two furs look exactly the same. You'd have to go to a furrier or go to a, like a fur, fur store where they sell you know, fur coats. Nutria is exactly like beaver. It's, it's basically your European beaver. You know? um, as far as these superior quality felts, you know, they're just about perfect. Uh, or they always were. Um, new batch I haven't seen yet, and I'm assuming they're the same. Um, let's talk a little bit about hat sizes. Okay, let's talk about hat sizes. What happens when your hat's getting a little old and that little ticket in the back falls out? Uh-oh, that little gold piece of cardboard that said uh, seven and three-eighths, whatever, it's gone, it ripped off. What size are you, sir? I don't know. I don't know. You're frantically looking along with your hats. Uh, or someone else had a gold sticker there. It worn off though. It's gone. Let me check this one. This one, oh man, no gold sticker. Okay, they're all too old. None of the size tags are here. Everyone is miss oh uh, nope, no sticker either. Okay. There is a way to size your hats. It's the secret hidden size tag. When you pull out the leather sweatbands, okay? The sweatband itself has a size. So when they're making a stack of seven and a quarters, they have to match it up with seven and a quarter sweatbands that are the right size, the right width. So they go to a cubby that's got seven and a quarter sweatbands and pull one out. On the back of that piece of leather says something like four, like seven and one fourth. Or it'll say 58, you know, 58 centimeters. But there's always something in there. Always. Okay, here's mine. Mine was written in like magic marker. Seven and three quarters. Alright. Looks like there's a mistake there too, whatever. They crossed something out. But um seven and three quarters, okay. That's a hidden. Let's see if course Lino has it. Most brands have it on the sweatband somewhere. So they get really old. Even that can fade from enough perspiration or whatever, just oxidization. Oxidation? Uh, let's see what we got. Okay, this one has an inside sticker. 
Borsalino have an inside sticker that has the model number. So if we forget how to make an Antonio, we forget what all the specs are, all the specs to that Antonio is here. You've got the name, name of the style, which includes the edge type, the brim width, um, you know, the quality of the felt, which crown they use, everything. And then you've got the color and everything. The color's got a size, the band has got a size, you know, a, a code. So it's right in there, also the size. This is 61. So this is a 7 and 5 eighths. Right? There's it. Yeah, there she is. It's a 61 centimeter. I think you can see that. All right. Seven five eighths. European hats are going to have it in centimeters. American hat, like the Stetson, is probably going to have it in American hat sizes. There might even be two in there. Sometimes they'll have it in chalk too, like somewhere else, like there. You see? Inspection sticker. Here it is, seven three quarters. Let's look at some more. Let's try a Biltmore. Biltmore is an American-made hat. Okay. This is made in the USA. Let's pick it up. Built more size ticket is there. Okay, it's a 60. Anything in here? Gotta be something. Wow. Looks like it ripped off. Sixty. Where are you, sixty? Yeah, no, this one actually was in here kind of like a sticker and it ripped off oh, my bad there let's see what else we got here's a Stetson straw okay same thing magic marker what does that say seven and seven and a quarter these ran big that's why seven and a quarter Okay, let's talk about some more uh, secrets, secret secrets. Um, steaming. The other day I was looking at a video, like a, sometimes hat things pop up on my uh, YouTube browser. Since like I look at my hat show, you know, sometimes uh, related stuff comes up. So it was like a, uh, a Gorin. Thing. and they were steaming a Panama but it was all wrong it was just totally everything about it was just all wrong um, I'm gonna say it was like they were just damaging the hat if anything okay here's the thing about about steaming you have to understand the, the process of it how how it works you have to understand the um, I don't know, but, um, you have to understand how it works, okay? Steaming doesn't really do too much to a hat that's soft. If it's just soft and you steam it, it doesn't really, you know, like overly soft. Generally our hats, they screw up when they get too soft. And like if the stiffener was holding the brim up here, gravity makes it just kind of fall and it flops it comes down on it into a bad place where it shouldn't be like just limp okay but there should be a curve and what's holding it up is this plasticky spray it's holding that shape up it's called the flange of the hat you know it allows it to snap like a uh, like a hinge or a breaking point a pivot point without that pivot point there's no up and down and the hat's not straight okay so this hat really should have been up like that. All right. Now, basically, when you steam a hat, that hard shell covering is getting melted for a second, and the hat's vulnerable. It's shapeable. So let's say you wanted to put a Western roll. You hit the this, this stiffener, you melt it for a second, you make your Western roll, and you hold it while the stiffener cools and hardens up. Now it's hardening into that plastic shell again, but in the new shape. And when you let go, it's going to just stay like that, okay? It's not the magic of the steam that does it. There's no magic there at all. That's just hot. That's all it is. It's just heat. It doesn't, you know, felt is not that magical. 
it's the stiffener that does the whole thing, okay? Now, if you have a hat that needs reshaping, it's usually, first the symptom is, it's too soft. Once you stiffen it back up, then you can get it back into shape, okay? So if you just take your too soft hat and you're steaming it and you're doing this and that, everything that you're saying, everything that you're doing, all your moves and your techniques is all BS. It just doesn't do anything. Um, it's like trying to glue, you know, glue a log cabin together without the glue. Um, it's the stiffener that's making everything happen in this hat. So, a lot of times when your hat fails and it's all out of shape and floppy, that's what it is. Essentially, you have to dust the hat. You got to get up all of the dust off everywhere, the edges here, here, the bottom, all around with packing tape. Wipe it and get every bit of dust off. Then you got to spray it. I use Ultra Hold hairspray a lot of the time. It's chemically, you know, it's acetone, just like a lot of the uh, stiffeners and shellacky type of things. It works very, very well. You know, you could use, there are stiffeners. Scout makes a good stiffener, but, it, you know, it's like a bottle this big and it won't go that far. But it's good, you know. Um, I use the hairspray. I dry it in a fan. I hold it up sometimes to the air vent. Blast it with, you know, let it dry quick. Sometimes it needs another coat or even another two, three coats. Generally between one and three coats will do it. And uh, let it dry and then it's hard. Now I'm ready to steam the hat. I can push it like this and steam it right there. And that will kind of move it. And then I'll hold it. Bam. Now the brim is up. Next thing I do is I straighten out that brim. I put it down like on a kind of a flat surface like that, and I, I steam it, the underside of the brim, the edge, and I straighten it. So first I move the brim, and then I straighten the brim. It's all done very methodically, you know, and there's a science to it. So, yeah, stiffening is what steams has. That's what I'm getting at. Steam does not steam hats. So when you see people, like, bring your thing up to the steamer and they just... A lot of people just don't know what they're doing. Uh, just make sure they don't steam the sweatband, because that will kill the hat, or if it doesn't kill it, it will kill it soon after, you know, will, uh, the longevity of the hat is gone. The, the sweatband can shrink up and get burnt and destroyed really easily with steam. Generally, not to a brand new hat, but if the hat is at all old, vintage, or just used, one touch of steam will destroy it and just melt it into this like stick. It looks just like a rawhide dog bone, like a hard piece of crunchy leather that just shatters in your hand. Um, it shrinks up like, you know, like to like about one tenth percent of the size that it was because all the water zapped out of it in a split second. Don't let anybody steam the inside. I'm going to sterilize the inside now for your bowl. Don't do it. If somebody doesn't know what they're doing with a steamer, just say, no, thank you. I don't want any steam. It's much more likely you're going to damage the hat more or knock something slightly out, and then you're going to fix the hat. Steaming a hat takes a whole bunch of skill. Um, what you can do is, you can if somebody hits it just with this light blast of steam all over, all these things that are blasted in already will just start opening like a flower. You're supposed to steam one area directly, right here, shape it, and then let go. You know, you don't steam the whole hat like, um, that's something different. Like steaming and brushing a hat, you want to just give the hat a quick mist of steam. What it does, it, it makes all the fur, the fur felt, stand on end. So that when you brush it, it gets the, all the, um, the dust and, and little particles out of the fur nap because the nap is standing up on end. So that's what the steam does when you give it a light misting. So that's like when you're kind of like, you want to steam a hat for other reasons, not for reshaping. You have little marks, little fingerprints, the felt just looks old and you know. What you do is you open it up, you steam it just like a quick mist, and you brush it counterclockwise all over the hat, starting from here, spiraling out, and then the brim counterclockwise like like a hundred times or five hundred times a thousand times almost like you're 
you're brushing your shoes, you know, like you're uh, shining your shoes, the more you do it, the more you, you brush, the better the felt it will be because all the fibers are going in the same direction. You always brush counterclockwise, no exceptions. The top of the hat is counterclockwise every single time. Western, doesn't matter what kind of felt. So that's when you could give it a quick mist to steam. But yeah, somebody has to steam your hat and they look like some teenager who doesn't know what they're doing, just pass. Just don't do it. You don't need it. If there's some dust on it, get the dust off with a little ring of packing tape. Just dab it. You know? Um, using a hat brush to get the brush off is okay, but it's not going to get it all off. It kind of moves most of it around which is why we give it that little misting of steam also. It helps to get it off too, but it also helps to get the felt smooth and going in one direction. All little scratches, fingerprints are all gone. Um, what else do we have? Initials, we talked about beavers and not beavers. Free reshapes. Uh, buffalo is not buffalo. <laughs> the X system we talked about. There's not a lot more to talk about. Um, a lot of hats vary in size. This is one thing that when I go up to the stock room, somebody says, get me a Stetson Temple seven and a quarter. All the quarters are a little different. Some of them run big, some of them are okay. Some of them run very big. Um, so you'll try it on, it might feel different every time. That's not unusual for something that's handmade. Some brands are more consistent. Other brands are not consistent. Um, I don't think it's always a reflection on quality, but it's just something about that hat. It, it, they vary, they're very erratic size-wise. Stetson is one of those companies, um, especially with their dress hats, I notice a lot of the stuff, you know, it's around a quarter and stuff. So, to be honest, it usually works in our favor because when people come into the shop to buy stuff, it's like, uh, oh, this quarter's a little too tight. Ah, good, all right. Good? What do you mean, good? Give me a second. I run upstairs, I look at all the quarters, I try to eye them out and find one that's a little too big. Then I bring that quarter, which is like a quarter and a half, and I give it to him and he's like, that one's perfect. What did you do to it? And I was like, I just got you another one. They're all a little different. Um, it's not something that a lot of people notice. A lot of us just, I don't know, I think we blame ourselves and stuff, you know. But, uh, you know, I just don't know how it fits, it's not, you know, or you're just confused. Um, but, in all, it's generally good to buy on the big side if you're in doubt, because tightening it up is such an uninvasive, simple thing to do. You, you saw I had that hat with the little padding in it. Um, it was this one. Okay. Put a little bit of padding inside my hat here. That's a cap brand new pad. I cut the ed edges off of it because I didn't need so much. Okay. There it is. It's been in there for, you know, like decades. Decades. I forget about it. Now my hat fits perfectly. If I need a little bit more room, like maybe I'm wearing my hair differently or something or whatever. Um, I can just pull that piece out. It's nothing. You can get it out, or you could add more to it. You could add just like to the um, to each side. I could put another inch and another inch there, and then I tighten it up slightly. I can put this in. You know, I can take it out. You generally don't want to use the same one if you've just pulled it out. It loses its stickiness. But you know, just buy some extras and stuff. You'll probably do that once, I guess still has some sticky but yeah just go big if you're in doubt hats do run funny they they all vary some hats are a little more consistent than others just go big guys and that's it now also i want to say um a big thank you to all you guys um i have the nicest nicest viewers in the world you guys rock I just want to thank you for your, um, your kindness, your generosity, your, your comments, and for watching me. Um, I think you all are amazing. You're probably the best group of viewers anywhere online. So, so thanks. Let's
Let's get it. I'd like to give a good shout out to Roger. Thanks, Roger, for uh, the PayPal donation. We're trying to build up this channel and do some more things, improve the quality. I think you guys can see the quality of the color has, uh, you know, the clarity. Everything is improving. That's partly due to, you know, you guys clicking like, uh, thumbs up. Uh, I get very minimal revenue from this, but it helps. And um, thanks for the, the cool donation, Roger. It's uh, appreciated. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.